Three, two, one. All right, so I've got Rabatani here. He's a CTO at Thornton Tomasetti, but he's the leader of Core Studio. And uh, over the last uh, several months uh, at TestFit, we've been working with Rob's team on getting uh, columns into TestFit. Uh, we're going to start with our parking garage facilities, but uh, we at TestFit are not professional uh structural engineers, believe it or not. So what we would rather do is rely on someone like Rob to get us professionally sized, you know, columns. So I'm just gonna give it a quick demo of, of what we've built so far. Um, I'm gonna draw just a, a site uh, and then I'm gonna go into the uh, configurator panel. We're gonna do parking and then Rob, this is what we've built so far. We enable column buffer, and then we're going to click this button. And this feature was developed in collaboration with you guys. Still in beta. Proceed. It locks the GUI, and then the columns show up. So on the other side of this API, we, we sent off some tributary errors, and we get back nice columns. So what's what's going on 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 what's Asterisk doing when it gets this data? Yes, so Asterisk is a, a family of machine learning models that we've built. Uh, start, I would say starting since 2016, actually. And what it's doing is the only input that it's taking is the uh, sort of column load takedown, which is generated by the spacing of the columns and the number of floors. Just based on information, it is predicting a column size. Um, you know that that is that. You know again, the user can choose uh, certain uh, restrictions on the width and oh, the width of the columns, and then it is picking a column size that works for that those parameters. So okay, um, and just to flex our model uh, to make sure we're not uh, pulling everybody's leg, it's not just vaporware. So I'm gonna change. I'm gonna change this buffer width there uh, from a, a foot six. We'll get a little bit wider. And so when we have a little bit more buffer area, what would you expect those columns to do when we get the the new data back? Um, they're gonna get uh, basically. Um, they're gonna get more square um, from that skinny rectangular section uh, shape that you had previously. All right. So let's get some new columns in here, and they're more square. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. It works. <laughs> but we, I mean, this is this is just the beginning in terms of uh, you know sort of what can be done with mm -hmm. models, especially for structures, because structures is very structured data to create clean and full uh, uh, ML models. So um, yeah, it's it's and it's very accurate too. I mean, you know. These here, probably between five and ten percent, you know, you can pretty much rely on it, particularly for this level of design. So the the goal, like what we're trying to do, is get the model out of a, a much more developed place right from the very get go, um, and that'll help. Uh, I think architects make decisions more effectively, and it'll keep it'll keep them from wasting uh, structural engineering time. In my mind on stuff that nobody's really getting paid for. Um, I mean, what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, exactly. This shortens the process significantly, uh, orders of magnitude faster. The reason is, is because typically an architect is giving a, a, a program to have X amount of parking spaces, mm -hmm. call it 300 or something like that. And then there's usually a, a pretty long process of going back and forth between actually getting the configuration of the parking lot, um, accounting for the column spacing, the column for this column spacing size. Uh, that's probably a month, to be honest, in a traditional uh, method of working with multiple you know, disciplines. Um, the fact that you can do it on the fly is you know, pretty significant. I mean, should we talk about what's coming next? <laughs> okay, what's coming next, Rob? 
It's coming down the pipe. I think what's coming next is going to be the next, uh, you know, aspect of asterisk that we have already, uh-huh. which is um, steel structure, mm-hmm. um, columns, and uh, beams and slabs, um, as well as concrete slabs um, and uh, cores. Um, so. I think that's coming next. So you'll be able to get, uh, you know, sort of the corn shell of the structure um, through uh, machine learning automation. That's amazing. And uh, this is, in your mind, is this BIM, what we're doing? You know, this is not BIM. This is um, this is design, this is design automation. BIM is just a, a necessity to document your project so that it can be built by others. But for the purpose of essentially the name of your com- company, test fitting <laughs> lines, um, this is what this is for. Um, so that we don't have to create a BIM model to verify a design. And the, the reason why we're really interested in this, Rob, is has to do with structural construction costs. Uh, the most expensive part of your building, the largest ticket item in your building is going to be structural. Um, and if well, there... it, it, it's, it's, it's between structural and mechanic, you know, those, those two components, structural and MEP systems. Well, um, in the, yeah, apart- in yeah, the yeah, apartment world, MEP. it's, it's absolutely going to be your structural stuff because of apartments. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the split systems that we use is a whole other problem that I can yeah. spend several hours complaining about, but, um, you know, when we're looking at these most, the most expensive, you know, parts of the building and we, we think about structural, at least for me, it's like, you know, we've spent three years building this constraint environment. Um, and now yeah. we're at a place where we're comfortable coordinating it with someone like you to get structural elements into it. Um, and this, this will lead to building optimization, uh, in, in, in the long run, um, you know, traditional generative design, you know, flashes into your mind, but in the near term, uh, just giving a a architect, a a tool like this saves them a lot of time. And if we can include all of the other elements of structure, right. Right. Um, we're generating the quantities on, on the fly as well. So as long as we have the metrics to, uh, price out a project, whether it's cost per cubic yard of concrete or cost per ton of steel, um, we can get uh, cost estimates on the fly as well. All right, Rob, we'll, we're gonna we'll patch it, we'll ship it, we'll get together with you guys at the beginning of January, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, building. Uh, gosh, I don't know, girder and anal- girder analytics tools or something. Um, plate sizing. Yep. Uh, kips per square foot generators, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, is uh, I think I think the next um, the next aspect of of the, what we're probably going to be do is actually have the models themselves as well accessible. The NL yes. models. The analytical models. Uh, not just, yeah. Um, well, the, the trained models um, that can be either forked or added to, um, you know, it's not just uh, so that, you know, others can customize their ML models, but, you know, most buildings are kind of, a building is a building, so not much changes. Right? <laughs> Wait, um, what? Buildings are buildings? <laughs> Uh, not much is going to change, so that's why that's why structural models are probably really straightforward. Actually, Providing, when it comes to- so you're saying you're saying let's open up the comp ba- the comp database so people can see it. Yeah. Okay. They know where the data comes from. Um, they know whether it's algorithmic data or whether it's you know um, uh, data mined data uh, from you know actual building projects. Um, I think that's the, and you know, you're seeing that now in, in machine learning as a whole with, you know, for instance, doctors and scientists using 
uh, a combination of um, uh, uh, basically clinical data, yep. um, as well as um, data that is calculated, um, basically pre uh, simulated, essentially. I'm I'm pretty excited about this line of thinking, Rob, because we like we don't do any of that at Tesla, right? Everything's deterministic, procedural from what we build. Um, yeah. And I think relying on tried and true human intellect is, is where we've landed because we trust the algorithms that way. Uh, yeah. and I think my mind is changing a little bit more. Like the more we work with you guys, the more I, I'm starting to think, okay, neural nets, uh, maybe not as bad as all that. Uh, especially if we have a, a, a good guide like you to take us down that road. Yeah, I think, and also I think this is where, you know, some of the, let's call it the um, the, uh, the generation who's already been in the business for 30 or 40 years to make a significant contribution. Because if they can sort of build in their preferences uh, into these models from the past, you know, 100 projects that they've worked on or more, um, then it truly becomes a customized uh, model. It's not just, you know, you're not just pulling information like, uh, in, you know, from the internet, like, uh, you know, uh, GPT-3, you know, which is mm -hmm. scary, right? <laughs> it's, but it's, what, what it's, you're saying it's, is, what you're saying is every structure, every licensed structural engineer could train their own structural model, um, train it in a way that would respect how they think. And then all exactly. of a sudden it's like, all right, we're going to use Rob AI to solve this guy, uh, or right. any number of like, you know, I, I feel like that'd be really interesting to like throw the, uh, I don't know, Philip Johnson AI at, at an architecture problem Absolutely. or something. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what, what makes an, what makes a designer, a designer, you know, unique. It's their very specific choices that they've made over the years, right? Mm -hmm. And not just one project over the course of a hundred projects. And sooner or later, um, you know, particularly a, a neural net type of model can start to predict those uh, your, that that next choice for the next yeah. project. So what what we're saying is like we're starting here with these columns. Uh, which is just a very simple algorithm right now, but several years from now, we could see a place where like each uh, engineering practice might have like an AI file that they would prefer their architects use in a configurator environment. Um, that's kind of trippy to think about. Uh, but there's also, yeah. you know, beams, there's, girders there's other thing other structural elements that we can start to optimize uh not just the columns yeah exactly it's just it's it's configurations you know that an engineer might choose um from one or another um it's potentially systems as well um or or what gets even more complicated is going to be hybrid of systems right it's not just a singular rule yep of particularly material, it may be I want to use steel columns and concrete, uh, you know, precast plank or something like that, uh, or timber floors nowadays. Um, yep. That um, you know you can really start to customize a building and have, you know, what's called pre pre built con con intelligence built in there. Kit of parts intelligence. Yep. 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 I'm all about that. All right, Rob. Well, thank you for your time this morning. I uh, look forward to getting this patched out to the users. Um, and just thank you for uh, for really educating the TestFit team about columns. We really didn't know anything. Well, I mean, I knew a little bit, but what I knew was nothing compared to what we've learned. Um, and also, thank you all for, for spending the time to, to help us build out this logic. It's been a lot of fun. And We've kept under wraps for so long. I'm excited to, to finally shout from the rooftops that this is happening. No, I'm glad to see it actually come into fruition. It's going to be fun. All right. Thank you.
And right. cut. <laughs>